Hey guys, welcome back to Cough Tool. I'm Rob. Alongside me is, right, sorry, nobody. Sarah's sick, and I didn't have time to find a replacement, so anyways, this is what happened this week in the world of power tools. Right, uh, VCG comes to OPT and John manhandles a big old slab. That would have made more sense if Sarah said it. Anyways, uh, Eric has a fancy hammer and Kyle holds all the power in the palm of his hands. Those stories and more coming up next. This is your cop tool we can review. This is gonna be a train wreck. It's true, Sarah is out sick, and we've all been crushed this week getting ready for NPS 19. So, I'm gonna try to make this quick. First up, Clint welcomes us back into the tool review zone where he features a new rigid octane seven and a quarter inch circular saw. There's no dancing, yetis, or slow-mo, but we still get an in-depth look at this clearly capable entry from rigid. If you've got problems only a circ saw can fix, this might be the best bet. You can find out at Tool Review Zone on YouTube. Next, we head just a couple miles down the road to Ohio Power Tool, where Vince brought the VCG crew to their expo. Vince was trying out a simple tape from Southwire when the rep shared a hack that Vince thinks 99.9% .9 of us won't know. I'll be honest, I listened to that hack like four times and I still don't understand it, leaving me in the 99.9%. .9%. To see if you understand, head over to VCG Construction on YouTube. I, I keep expecting Sarah to be there for no reason. Now let's head down under where our buddies at Oz Tool Talk show off a DeWalt rotary hammer and more specifically an M-Class DeWalt VAC designed to keep the silica dust under control. It takes Dwayne a few minutes to realize he needed to hook up the hose. I told you they should be banned from the show. Everyone knows the hose thing, you know, hooks into the other hooker hose knobber thing, duh. If you don't know how to hook up a vac, don't bother watching Oz Tool Talk on YouTube. Our last stop on the tube takes us back to RR Buildings for another dose of Tools Day, where Kyle shows off his Bostitch palm nailer. This tiny wonder makes quick work of some seriously long nails. Even a 60 penny ring shank nail sinks quickly through six inches of material. If you're having trouble nailing things in small spaces, head over to RR Buildings on YouTube. You know what else? I, that's right, still alone. Fortunately for me, the Concord Carpenter never gets sick because it's time to do some actual work with Rob Robillard. Hey guys, I'm just putting on a uh, sanding conversion disc on my grinder. This one's made by Diablo. I've got another one by Gator and basically allows me to use my grinder for other things than cutting metal and grinding concrete. I can now use it to sand. These are like 50 grit sandpaper backing. Uh, you know, there's different grits that you can use. These are 50, um, pretty aggressive. They're fiber backed, but it allows me to do back, um, back scribing. I can use it when I'm coping big crown molding and take a little bit of material off. It hogs a lot of material off. You actually get a lot of control with this because it's of the design and it just gives you another option for this tool, which is great. More options, the better to solve problems. Hope this helps. Take care. Thanks, Rob. That was awesome. You wanna hang out while I, you're busy? Rob's, Rob's busy, that's cool. I'm fine. Moving on, it's time for Sarah's project of the week. Except that Sarah's sick, so I'm not gonna tell you about the modern outdoor chair she picked out from Fix This, Build That. Although it is kind of awesome, so I'll put the link down below. No, it's my project of the week, which means we're gonna find something awesomely nerdy. And I can always count on copious amounts of chic geek from Four Eyes Furniture. Chris found himself staring at his own TV, deeply dissatisfied with its glaring lack of awesome, and decided to build a pair of cabinets that makes the entire thing look like a giant Nintendo Switch. This is something Sarah would never get. I'm starting to think I don't even need her. Oh God, I'm so lonely, Sarah, come back, please. <clears throat> Sorry. You can find inspiration to improve your own boring TV at Chris Salomon on YouTube. Oh, thank God. <clears throat> Shane's here. That means it's time for Construction Junk with Shane. Welcome back to Construction hey, Junk. Dude, hey, dude, so glad hey, you're here. Man. Why don't you Good. come with me over to uh, our studio? Right. You can come okay. Okay. just right around here. Uh, there you go. Right. You stand right where Sarah does. You uh, kind of okay. look like her and everything. Right. It's really Welcome nice to here. my studio. Thank you. All right, just use that camera right there and uh, do your thing, bud. All right, thanks. Welcome back to Construction Junk. Here's what's happening in the news. OSHA recently announced that they are considering updating their lockout tagout standard and are asking for comments from anyone interested. The agency is specifically looking for information regarding the use of control type circuit devices that isolate energy and maintenance applications, as well as the risks involved with workers interacting with robots on the job. If a change isn't, ends up being made to the standard, it'll be the first time it has been updated since it was published in 1989. Whoa, that's a long time. Yeah, three decades. Right. 
Construction Junkies annual Best Construction Podcast competition kicked off last week and the voting booth is officially open. This year there were seven nominations including Content Crew, the Lean Zone Podcast and many more. Each week I'll be publishing an in-depth look at each of the contest nominees starting with our defending champion Con Expo Con Ag Radio. To vote for your favorite podcast or to find more stories about the construction industry, visit constructionjunkie.com. Oh, I'm going to do that, buddy. Oh, good. So, well, then. Thanks. You know what? You want to just like, you know, stay here. Just stay uh, where Sarah normally uh -huh. does and let me finish yeah. the mm -hmm. rest of the show. Is I, that I, cool? Let's I would. Do that. Oh, yeah. Hello. Mm hmm. Well, that's, uh, yeah. It's not real. Oh, it's... My, my blog's on fire, so I got I to gotta hit it's it. A, yeah. It's a mug. Yeah. It's okay. I've got other friends, you know, like on Instagram. Completely unrelated to that. Let's head over to Instagram for our favorite post of the week. First up, John Malecki manhandles a big old slab. All right, Sarah picked that one out. I mean, John is awesome, but apparently Sarah had lunch with him at the last NPS or something. Whatever. Just built it, found himself on the job site with a sweet Makita laser, but lacking a Makita battery. Fortunately, the laser features a USB cable for alternate power, so you can hook it up to a Milwaukee battery like he did and create an unholy union of power tool efficiency. But you know, you do you. Eric from Mechanical Hub, normally a trendsetter, finally caved to peer pressure this week and got himself a beautiful Martinez hammer. Super nice. And finally, the Toolaholic reminds us that silica dust is something we should all take seriously, even when chipping. Keeper shows off the DeWalt $60 accordion vac attachment that helps keep the dust out of your lungs. You can find all these great creators on Instagram and in the links below. Guys, thanks so much for bearing with me this week. I really appreciate it. I promise Sarah will be back next week and everything will be better. Before I go, I want to congratulate last week's winner, Momic. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. You won our Makita two gallon wet dry vac, so congratulations. Our prize this week is something special, due mostly to where we'll be next week. Next Thursday, we will be in Milwaukee with a bunch of our favorite content creators at the Milwaukee MPS 19 event, where we're gonna see the reveal of all the new Milwaukee tools, which leads us to our prize. Whoever wins this week is going to get to choose any of the new tools they see as their prize, after it gets released, with a limit of to retail value of I think 400 bucks, which still, that should cover quite a bit. And how do you get entered? All you gotta do is leave a comment below telling us who you'd like to see us interview at the event to get their feedback on what they saw at NPS. Guys, thanks again for being here. I really appreciate your support. Please like and subscribe. Thanks so much to Milwaukee and Ohio Power Tool for sponsoring us this week, and then we'll see you next week.